Hello world, it's Siraj and I used AI to design a novel treatment for cancer, a specific type of cancer called lymphoma. And I used Google's new AlphaFold 3 to design what's called protein. And it's an inhibitor and we're gonna talk about exactly how I did it so you can do the same. I used AI to generate the entire research paper. I use it to generate all of the code I use it to generate the protein model and I use it to explain why it thought that that was a novel and useful candidate for treating lymphoma and in a way that has never been done before. I did all of this in a few hours using AI and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I did that so you can do the same thing because AI democratizes science and it enables anybody to become a scientist no matter where you live you don't have to have a PhD you can really do this and you can use generative AI to generate all this domain knowledge that you don't have with citing your sources like I didn't do back in 2019. Hey man can I copy your homework? Oh. But now you know you cite them all and it's all good so this is amazing and it's just truly incredible that this was possible. I'm going to go through exactly how I did this and I was able to run all of these experiments on HPC AI's computing cluster, which really is an affordable, amazing option to run all sorts of fine tuning experiments, GPU experiments. It's a great alternative to AWS because that's too complicated a lot of the times and it's just a great service and you know, they are amazing because they sponsor this video. So thank you HPC AI for enabling potentially life-saving application of AI. They're, they're an amazing company, I'm a big fan. And it allows you to reserve clusters of instances and storage, you know, 200 gigabytes of storage at least. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to use it to run these experiments, all right? So let's start with what is the big deal here? Why is this something that is worth talking about? And what enabled me to do this? What the big deal is, is AlphaFold. Now, now, Google has been working on this for many years, starting back in 2018 with AlphaFold 1, which was able to predict how proteins fold in a very novel way, but it didn't do it that well. It did do it really well, but it didn't do it that well because there were still some errors in the predictions. And that's where AlphaFold 2 came in. It improved those predictions and those accuracy, those percentage likelihoods. AlphaFold 3 blew them all out of the water and it was able to predict not just how proteins fold it was able to predict the interactions between proteins and all of these different molecules and what google was able to do with alpha fold 3 specifically as opposed to one or two is generate this database of proteins they generated 200 million of these protein structures now why is this important because biochemists biotech labs universities researchers all across the world can use these protein models to design drugs treatments cures for all of these different diseases and all of these diseases stem from problems within the protein themselves if a protein misfires if it constructs the wrong type of molecular machinery all of this can cause all sorts of growth that is unchecked and when growth is left unchecked it becomes like a tumor which is cancer and that applies to all systems of the body and this is a huge breakthrough to have this database available for us but not every protein is in this database so what I did is I asked Claude I said I need a cancer protein that's not in this database and I gave it a screenshot of that and it said well let me suggest a few different proteins that might not be in that database. And I said, list the top five ones. And it listed five of them. And I said, okay, I went through and I systematically checked the database for all of these. And these are all acronyms, right? NPM ALK, PAX3 FOXO1. And I go to the database and I check if they're there. I'll go to Claude, I'll see what it's called. It says PAX3, I'll go here, I'll type it in PAX3. And it turns out, you know, a lot of these have existing protein structures, but one of them I found did not have an existing protein structure, and that was NPMALK, which is a cancer, which stands for anaplastic large cell lymphoma, which is a blood cancer. And I said, okay, so this is an actual protein that doesn't exist in the AlphaFold database and it doesn't exist anywhere because I checked the protein database as well and it wasn't in the protein data bank which is at rcsb.org and uh, there were similar variations of that but it wasn't this exact protein 
and which is responsible for this very specific form of cancer. And Claude was able to surface that. Great job, Claude. So I asked it for more information here. Can you break it down? Okay, it's a blood cancer. Okay, it, you know, we have approximately one case per million people per year, and it is a childhood disorder. Rare accounts for 10 to 20% of childhood lymphomas. Is there any use for AlphaFold 3 here? Because this protein doesn't exist. And it said, yes, we can actually use AlphaFold to generate this protein model. And I said, well, that's amazing that you just synthesized this new uh, protein that we could use with AlphaFold. And they said, yes, you can. So what it did was it wrote the FASTA sequence, which is basically a text format used very often in bioinformatics, which is a recipe for proteins. And proteins are like robots. They do all sorts of things. They construct things, they destroy things, they create things, they work together in unison for all different applications in your body. Proteins are like apps in an app store. And the recipe for these proteins is in this FASTA file. And Claude was able to generate the FASTA file for me. And it said, well, this protein doesn't exist in any database. And the reason it doesn't exist is because it's really hard to synthesize in a lab. It's this very specific type of protein. It's a fusion protein, and it's hard to crystallize physically in a wet lab. So it's actually better and easier to generate it in silico inside of a computer. And so Claude actually did that. It took two different bits of information because this protein is actually a fusion of two existing ones, NPM1 and ALK, and it created a virtual fusion protein that causes this specific type of cancer, ALCL. And it wrote it out, and then it explained to me how DNA, RNA, DNA then becomes RNA, which then creates amino acids, which then creates the protein. It explained everything in detail for me. And I said, okay, I had more questions for it. And what's a good analogy for this? It said, you know, imagine magnets and rubber bands and how once these amino acids are created inside of the ribosome, it then immediately folds into a protein and your body is folding 2 million proteins per hour. It's also discarding them in this constant, amazing, mind-blowing molecular machinery that's happening. But it's making 2 million proteins per hour. And all these proteins are doing all sorts of things. And so we want to predict how a protein is going to fold. What is the resulting protein? What's the resulting structure based on the amino acid information? And Claude was able to generate that. And if we are able to do that, then we can design a drug that's going to then treat that protein. And by that, I mean, it can turn off like an on off switch. It can turn off a cancer protein. In this case, it could turn off this specific type of cancer protein that was so hard to synthesize. So we did two things for the bioinformatics community. The first thing is we created the 3D model for this protein that was so hard to synthesize in the first place. And the second thing is, okay, well, Claude, based on this protein, can you think of a potential treatment for it? And it's going to go through all of the literature and it said, well, there's three generations of drugs that exist, ending with lorlatinib. And I asked it, well, how effective is that drug? Well, it said 80% effectiveness for five year survival rate with this treatment. But what about the remaining 20%? Could we improve that 80% up to 90%, maybe, maybe 95% with a better option? And it said, yes, yes, we can. And how did it do that? Well, it generated a new variant of that. And it said it's calling it a dual site inhibitor concept. It's going to say most current drugs target just ALK is ATP pocket, but a dual site inhibitor could bind the ATP sites and bind the NPM fusion interface. I have no idea what all that means, but it it does, right? And it reasoned why that is the case. And then it then wrote out all of the details. It called it the NPM ALKI DSI first generation. And it has, it adds 10 to 15% to the success rate for this specific cancer, bringing us to a 90 to 95% effectiveness. And I said, please generate that concept. It drew it out. And then it generated the information for that, the FASTA sequence for it right here. And that FASTA sequence, we can then try to fit it into that in what's called molecular docking software and see if it fits, because if it fits like a key into a hole, like into a pocket, then it can turn it off. It can turn it off like an on and off switch. It can turn off the cancer, but it depends on whether or not it can fit into that. And, and Claude is saying it can likely fit into it and it can fit in a way that is more effective than anything else that exists so far. Now we have to test this in a wet lab to verify this information. 
But in Silico, we were able to get so much certainty so that saves us so much time when we then go and verify it in a wet lab. Any biochemist watching this who wants to do that, any university student who has access to a biochemistry lab who is excited right now, you should be. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. So we have this now. We have two FASTA sequences, one for the protein which never existed before with the cancer protein we have now modeled it in a way that's never been modeled and two for the potential treatment for it now we have something to give alpha fold right so then we go back to alpha fold and i gave it to alpha fold and alpha fold was able to generate this 3d model and how did alpha fold do that well i said hey alpha fold here is on this server Here's the FASTA sequence. You know, I just copied and pasted it, just like Claude gave it to me. And then I said, confirm and submit job. And then it was able to do that. And then it shows the 3D model for that. Now I can then download that 3D model. And that 3D model is actually going to be a CIF file, which can then convert into a PDB file, which is just how you model 3D proteins. And it's just a standard format for bioinformatics. And it's across the web. And I ran this on HPC AI as well, and it allowed me to use clusters of GPUs. I love that as well. The other thing I want to note is that that was just the first part. We were able to generate the 3D model, um, but we want to test if that inhibitor with 90% efficacy that it's never been done before, we want to test if it really worked. And so how do we do that? Well, we have to use what's called molecular docking software. And what this does is it tests out on the 3D model of the protein whether or not it's going to fit into the pocket. And there has to be a pocket for an on and off switch. And it's going to try out all of these different pockets. And I found this incredible resource called Mole Moda, which is by this lab, I think Pittsburgh lab. It allows you to just upload your file. And I asked Claude to convert it to a .mol file, .molecule. But it's able to just convert from FASTA to .mol to all of these different formats for us, which is why it makes science so much faster and easier. This was my dream, guys. This was my dream years ago to be able to do the work of decades of science in days, hours and minutes. This is how we improve civilization and reach you know, a new level of evolution. Anybody can do science. All right. It is such an exciting time to be alive right now. This is incredible. OK, we, we need to be very happy right now. Don't let the doom and gloom out there get you down. AI is making everything amazing. You just have to use it. So you know, we can simulate docking on this web interface without having to do any code. And it's going to then create a job for us that lets us just run that. And so I just uploaded it and I ran the docking job and it said, yep, you know, there's a very high likelihood that it works. And then, OK, I think I just did some science here. This is something that's worth making a paper about. And importantly, the paper should not just this detail and make this reproducible. It should show scientists how to then reproduce this in a lab. And so I asked O1 Preview to do that because I've asked O1 Preview to write papers before and it's really good at that. And it was able to do that. It generated the entire paper on this. Every single part of this, it generated with the citations and everything. And I wanna go into that now for us. And I have all of the visualizations generated by Claude as well for us to look at. Just, just incredible stuff here. It was able to design this fusion protein, you know, looks at the materials and methods, all these charts and diagrams, the fastest sequences, the design principles behind it, the why. That's what AI does so well. It explains the why. You just have to ask it. And all of these instructions for any biochemist watching this, synthesize this thing, test it out in a lab. Here is all of the instructions and the scalar values associated with the binding affinity in silico that you can estimate to find in a wet lab. And we have tables and we have charts. We have resistance mutations. We have background knowledge. We have dual site inhibition. What is all this stuff? At this point, I don't even know, but it's amazing and I love it. And it's just beautiful that all these citations are there. Thank you, AlphaFold to Claude. Here's the code for it as well. And call it dual strike uh, docking.py. I asked O1 Preview to generate the code. It did that too. We can see the code for it here. And it is about 167 lines of Python, where we just prepare the protein sequence for conversion to FASTA. We submit it to AlphaFold. We get back the PDB. We then create the model of the inhibitor. The it's, we're calling it dual strike. Gave it a cool name. Uh, and then we dock it. We just fit it into the pocket, see if it works. 
all right it hits a certain threshold it's great let's test it in the lab now and this would take years before and now it takes minutes if you have the motivation so that's what it is with o1 preview um i got it to make it 10 out of 10 guys if you need if you ever need your outputs to be good ask the ai to rate it out of 10 and then say we'll make it 10 out of 10. there's my prompt hack for the episode and HPC AI was able to make all this possible. You can run even more intense computing experiments on HPC AI. I SSH'd into my cluster here. I ran it. You can see me right here on HPC AI's cluster. I H SSH'd into it. I have this running my Python file. It tests out all the different simulations as well. You can do this in pure Python. You can use a web interface. You can request the weights for AlphaFold. If you don't get the weights for AlphaFold, there's Protein X, which is ByteDance, AKA TikTok's open source reproduction of it which is free try that out too run it on hpc ai server here's the overview you can reserve a cluster there's so much incredible technology the possibilities are endless i want you guys to go read the paper go try out the code try to do some novel science out there post about it on the web let's make science cool again thank you hpc ai I want every single person watching this, go check out HPC AI, all right? They're awesome for sponsoring real science, open source AI. I love you guys, all right? Until next time, happy research.